Hi, does it look like I'm in Bali? <laughs> they say in Bali that Bali either sucks you in or spits you out. That some people will go on a trip there and turn around and fly back just a couple of days later, change a ticket and leave because the energy just sort of shoots them out. Uh, for me, it was quite the opposite. Bali sucked me right in. In fact, can't believe I'm saying this, but when I was there, it felt like mother nature was hugging me. I have always had the adventurous travel bug. I started working full time when I was 19 in corporate America and would save up all my money and go on trips. I would backpack around Europe a couple of different times. I would go to Japan or Brazil or wherever I could get to. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I knew that since I lived in San Francisco, which was right next to where I grew up, that I wanted to make sure that I didn't just ignorantly move to the closest city and stay there for the rest of my life. That I actually explored the world to find out where I should live. That was one of the things. So I got to Rome when I was in my early 20s, maybe 22, and I loved Rome. I loved the energy there. I loved the vibe. I just didn't want to move to Rome then. The same thing happened in Bali. I got to Bali and was just like, I am supposed to be here. It's not a logical decision. It did not come from up here. In fact, I stopped making logical decisions a while back. When I was making decisions based upon logic, I ended up with a master's in statistics. I thought if you studied what you were good at, that was a good way to go with life, especially if it was a field like statistics that would apply to all these different areas. It could be in any field. So now what I think is the most logical thing to do is to follow your heart, to make decisions based out of your heart. And that's the way that I choose to live my life. And this decision feels like it's coming from beyond my art, like my soul. Sounds a little weird, but to help you explain, I saw Lady Gaga one time getting interviewed and the interviewer asked her where she got the inspiration for a specific song. She mentioned that she woke up with the lyrics in her head in the middle of the night, grabbed a pen, grabbed the light, turned it on and started jotting them down. And the interviewer was surprised. He said, well, I wake up inspired sometimes, but I never actually get up and write it down. And I can't believe you did. And what Lady Gaga said to him was, when God calls, I answer. And that's kind of what this feels like. It kind of feels like God is calling me to Bali or spirit or universe or whatever it is, is calling me to be there. It's a feeling that I feel in my body that right now I am supposed to be there. Now, of course, logically, there are other reasons like it's freaking amazing. It's beautiful. It is in the 80s every day, which I love. There's massages on every corner. It's almost impossible to walk past a place and not go in because it's so freaking cheap. It's hard to justify why you should keep walking instead of going in and chilling out, getting the reflexology or the massage. Fresh coconuts are amazing. Also, the energy there is very relaxed. The whole culture is very heart-centered. I mean, you walk down the street and people are smiling at you. I love that. I mean, here we walk down the street and it's like, you don't acknowledge anyone, don't acknowledge anyone, and it's so weird. The most logical reason to go is because of the surgery I just had on my elbow and on my wrist. The doctor said I should be fully recovered, he thinks, by mid-June, which hopefully it's somewhere around there, fully recovered to doing yoga, regular light housework, like even lifting a coffee cup is kind of hard right now, so things like that, and working moderately on a laptop. So given that I will be way more healed by then, it's still the culture and the environment where I could spend a lot more time relaxing, focusing on the rest of my recovery with the massages, the green juice, the healthy food, and the laid back lifestyle will really aid in finishing off my recovery from my injuries. My one-way ticket is going there in June, and it feels kind of major. I mean, I moved to San Francisco when I was 17, which was 20 years ago. So I've always lived in California. When I went to grad school, it was UCLA. So this has been my home. So going overseas for a while does feel like a big decision. However, I'm not that nervous about it because I have been working my courage muscle. You've heard me talk about our spiritual muscles before and doing spiritual workouts. So if I went to the gym and I started working at my bicep, over time it's going to get stronger and I'm going to be lifting bigger weights. Well, I have been working my courage muscle over time. I mean, last year I walked on fire at Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power Within. Last year I also climbed up this teeny little pole in the woods and uh, stood on top and jumped off and grabbed a trapeze. That was terrifying. So I've been working my courage muscle over time and now this just feels like this is the next courageous step to take. I define courage as taking action in alignment with your heart and your spirit, not letting fear rule your life. 
The logical reasons to not go mainly involve fear when I saw that it made my decision much easier. Fear of if I sell my stuff or give it away, I won't be able to get it back when I come back. And I no longer want to make fear-based decisions in my life. In fact, my life is all about courage and moving forward in the direction of my heart and my spirit. Of course, I will miss family and friends. Relationships would be one thing keeping me here, but this isn't forever. I'll be back. I'll be back to the US for sure. You are invited to join me on my adventures in Bali. Please subscribe to my channel and come over to richerexperiences.com. When you leave your email address, I will send you a free gift. Plus, you will get emails with videos in them about how to be more alive, radiant, and joyful. Have a great day. Bye.